Yes. Uh, you mean the chart? Yeah. Uh, we do a chart. We create a chart for each uh, function that we need to graph. Okay. So we're going to go back to a cubic function and a fourth degree function in a minute. Anything in the quadratic? Do you have any questions on the quadratic? The quadratic is clear. Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, I would like us to uh, w look at a word problem. 75 on page 362 because I'm sure you're asking yourselves why do I need to know how to graph a polynomial function? Why do I need to know the graph or understand the graph? So in 75 on 362 there is a graph that looks like this. For those of you who do not have a book handy if you have, if your colleague doesn't have one, please share. So if your colleague doesn't have one, please share. You can come closer if you want. So the graph looks something like this. Right? Okay, on uh, problem 75. During a diagnostic evaluation, a 33-year-old woman experienced a panic attack. This is her heart rate. This is time and this is her heart rate. So time in minutes. And this is heart rate beats per minute. Okay. As you can see, um, experienced a panic attack right here a few minutes after she had been asked to relax her whole body. The graph shows the rapid increase in heart rate during this the panic attack, as you see. Part A, for which time periods during the diagnostic evaluation uh, was the woman's heart rate increasing? From uh, 1 to 4. Union. And 8 through 10. Very good. What about decreasing? This is part A and this is part B. Which time period during the diagnostic evaluation was the woman's heart rate decreasing? 4 to 8, union. Perfect. How many turning points does this function have? Now remember what a turning point is. If you want to follow my hand for a second. Ah, turn. Ah, turn. Uh, turn. How many turning points? Yes. One, two, three. Three turning points. Part D. Suppose that a polynomial function is used to model the data displayed by the graph. What do you think the degree should be? Minimum. Right. When the degree is 4, <clears throat> how many terms max? Three. 3. So the degree is 4. Can be more, but not lower than 4. Part E. For the model in Part D, which is degree 4, should the leading coefficient of the polynomial function be positive or negative? So if it's positive, does this. Right? If it's negative, the, if the leading coefficient, uh, like for the quadratic function, forget about what I just said. For x squared, the leading coefficient is positive. Right? And the leading coefficient is negative. Okay. So should it be, should the leading coefficient be positive or negative? Okay, let's lo look one more time. This has a negative leading coefficient. And this has a positive leading coefficient. Okay, so it's negative. negative. Okay. Uh, use the graph to estimate the woman's maximum heart rate during the first 12 minutes. The maximum during the first 12 minutes of the diagnostic evaluation. And after how many minutes did that occur? So T equals? 10 minutes. 
how much was it? So heart rate equals roughly I see it between 110 and 120 115 and that's beats per minute uh, part G use the graph to estimate the woman's minimum heart rate during the first 12 minutes of the diagnostic evaluation and after how many minutes did this occur so I see it at t equals 8 minutes very good and the heart rate is 64. I would agree with 64 so this is one application of polynomial functions the polynomial function is degree 4 has a negative leading coefficient and it has three terms okay now let's go back and choose um, any degree 3, degree 4, 5, 6 uh, from uh, numbers 41 through 64 on page 361 so we can continue I'd like to go over all the steps one more time one for a uh, odd degree and one for an even degree okay we want to look at 57 57 very good good pick so we have f of x which is x squared x minus 1 to the third and x plus 2 As I mentioned earlier, I apologize, I didn't uh, grade your homework yet. I uh, will, and I'll return on Monday, but I have one that was emailed to me with no name on it, and I forgot to write the name on it. So if you're one of those who emailed me your homework, please stop by here at my desk uh, before you leave today so you can take a look at what I have, and maybe it's yours, okay? Okay, can anyone tell us what is the degree of this function? Three. Careful, careful, careful. Oh, it's two. It's a five, six. Exactly. Two plus three plus one. Six. So when you expand this, you'll get, get an x cubed. When you multiply that x cubed by x squared, you'll get x to the fifth. And then at the end, when you multiply by x, you'll get x to the sixth. So degree is? Six. I'm getting the chart going. I have to identify the uh, domain. And what is the maximum possible number of turns? Five indeed. You cannot, it doesn't have to turn five times, but you cannot turn more than five times. Okay. So, can anyone give us the domain of this function? Of course, all real numbers negative infinity to infinity. Should I write the list of items that I need to present for a polynomial function? Any polynomial function? Yes? Okay, number one, domain. Number two, x and y intercepts. Number three, symmetry. If the function is symmetric. Number four, max possible number of turns five and of course degree I have to mention the degree otherwise we'll not be able to determine the maximum possible number of turns max min I'll put in parentheses TI 84 or any other calculator we can't really do it by hand unless it's a turn uh, six multiplicities Seven, end behavior. I can't think of anything else. Okay, we already have the domain. How do I determine the x-intercepts? And how many <coughs> solutions will I have to write no matter what? Six solutions. Very good. So, 
some of them may, may repeat, which is possible, but I have to write six solutions. So for the x-intercepts, I have to set y equal to 0. This is nice because it's already factored for us. So I will be able to write those six solutions very easily. Can anyone give us two of those? Very good. Since a solution appears twice, has multiplicity 2, what will the function do at that point? Remember x squared. And you will know what, what the function will do when it has two solutions at that point. Very good. Now can you give me three more? What will the function do when the multiplicity is 3? Remember x cubed. What does x cubed do? And you will remember that for forever. What does x cubed do? It has three solutions, x equals 0. Cross flat. And can you give me one more solution? What does the function do when it has a single multiplicity 1? Cross. Straight cross. Normal cross or just cross. Now I put them in the chart in ascending order, carefully. Negative 2, 0, and 1. At negative 2, I make myself a note, a cross. At 0, I make myself the note, turn. And at 1, cross flat. What do I write under these three numbers? No, because I determined them. I determine them by writing y equals 0. Now the degree is even. If the degree is even, the function has to do this or this, depending on the leading coefficient. What is the leading coefficient of this? When you multiply x squared by x cubed by x, what will be the leading coefficient? 1. So it's positive. Does the function come from positive to go into positive or from negative going to negative? Because it's even. It has to behave like x squared or like negative x squared. It's open. It opens upwards because the leading coefficient is positive and has to follow the same rule like x squared. Good. So what do I write here? Infinity. Perfect. What do I write here? Infinity. Perfect. So what do I have accomplished so far? One. Two, there is no point in talking, talking about the y-intercept because when x is 0, I already have it. Uh, I already know the maximum possible number of turns. This has to wait. I already know the multiplicities. What will you say about multiplicities one more time? How many? What is the multiplicity of 0? 2. What is the multiplicity of 1? 3. What is the multiplicity of negative 2? 1. Okay, so that is done. The end behavior is done. And the only question is now, before I graph, is this function symmetric? So when I'm asked to find whether the function is symmetric or not, please remember I have to determine f of negative x. So I will get negative x to the second power, negative x minus 1 to the third, and negative x plus 2. How much is negative x to the second power? X. Squared. Yeah. Now here when I factor out negative 1 and raise it to the third power, it will be negative 1 times x plus 1 to the third power. Here I factor out negative 1 and I get x minus 2. This negative 1 with negative 1 will make a positive 1. So then I have x squared, x plus 1 to the third, x minus 2. And remember three questions. Does this equal the original function? Does this equal negative the original function or none of the above? Of course none. It cannot. If it crosses a negative 2 and crosses at 1 and turns at 0, it cannot be symmetric. But let's analyze it. So here is the original function. Are these two the same? No, so it's not even. <coughs> now, if I just put minus in front of this one, will they be the same? 
minus outside? No. no. So the function is not symmetric. OK. Now let's graph. So please follow me one more time and uh, carefully. And you don't have to write anything for a minute or less. Just let me just show you what I do and how I read the graph and how I put it on how I read the chart and how I put it on the on the Cartesian system or the coordinate system. Ready? OK, that's all I need. OK. So I have to show negative 2, 0, which is this. I have to show 0, 0, which is this. And I have to show here 1, 0. So far, so good? So now I see this function is coming from positive infinity, and it crosses. It's coming from positive infinity, and it crosses at negative 2, 0. But it has to have a turn here because it comes back and turns again at 0, 0. So it has to turn because it comes back to turn at 0, 0 according to this. It has to come to a minimum somewhere because it comes back and crosses at 1, 0 and it's going to positive infinity. One more time. Do I know how low it is here? No. Do I know how low it is here? No. I don't have enough information in college algebra to do that. In calculus, yes, I will know exactly where it's going. And I don't need any calculator. But now we don't have enough information here to do that. So one more time. It's coming from positive infinity. It crosses. OK, I already noticed one mistake. I wrote here cross, but, cross, but I did not read the flat. So that's wrong. I just realized when I look there, it's wrong. Cross flat means, if uh, this is the point, cross flat means this, not the way I graphed it. So I already have to make an adjustment. So it's coming from positive infinity. It crosses normally at negative 2, 0. It has to come to a minimum. It turns at this point. But now, from here, it has to come and cross, but very slowly, something like this. Not as I had it before, because I didn't look at that word. So cross flat means this. I don't know how low this is going to be. I don't know how low this is going to be. But I know that this is the shape for sure. One more time. From positive infinity, it crosses straight. Or if you want, crosses fast. And then it turns. And then it crosses, but very slowly. This is a, a very slow cross. One point only, but very slow cross. OK, now with the graphing calculator, we will put it in in y equals. Clear if you have anything else. And we have x squared. And in parentheses, um, x minus 1 cubed, x minus 1 parentheses cubed, and then uh, x plus 2. Now, before I hit Enter, I have to decide upon the viewing window. So coming back to my graph, coming back to my graph, I don't care to see more than at, let's say, negative 4 and positive 4. These should not be too low, but I have no idea. So for now, I'm going to say negative 6 and 6. And then I'll adjust the viewing window. But that's all I need to know right now. So I go back and go to the window. And I said negative 4, 4 with a scale of 1. And negative 6, 6 with a scale I don't think I have any mistake, but we'll see in a moment. So negative 4, 4 uh, with a scale of 1. And negative 6, 6 with a scale of 1. OK, I see it. It's not good enough. But let's graph it anyway for a second. So here it comes. It crosses straight. It 
here I don't see anything, and I know this, this is impossible. Because it's a smooth, continuous function. You cannot. So I'm going to enlarge it here, zoom in, and then I'm going to um, zoom out to catch this minimum. But I know that this is impossible, absolutely impossible. And I want you to see the cross here. So I'm going to change the y from a negative 1 to a positive 1. And let's see what happens. So I want to see that flat cross. Here it comes. Here is at zero now. Ah. So as you see here, it turns as expected. It has to come to a minimum. And it crosses, but it crosses not like here. This is a straight cross because the solution is multiplicity one. But here, multiplicity three makes the graph to cross very slowly. So here's a minimum. Since I'm here, I'm going to find this minimum between 0 and 1. So second and calc, I'll find the minimum, 3. And I want it between 0, enter, 3, enter. I'm sorry, not 3. I have to start from scratch. I don't know why I wrote 3. OK, 3. From 0, enter, 1, enter, and please give me the minimum. So the minimum is. First of all, when x is 0.42, the minimum y value is negative 0.08. So I'll put that in my chart at point, 0.42 minus 0 0.08. And now I have to zoom out to get this minimum. So I'm going to change the viewing window. I only care to change the uh, y minimum into negative um, 15 and with a scale of 5. I'm not changing anything else. So here it comes. OK, not good enough. I have to go further down. So I'm going to change it to negative 20. I think the calculator needs to see it. OK, so see, do not believe this. Do not trust this when you know it's not true, but it's a scale. OK, so I see that the minimum is somewhere between negative 2 and negative 1. So I go to second and calc, and I choose 3. And it's between negative 2 and negative 1. Negative 2, enter, negative 1, enter, and give me the minimum. And the minimum is at negative 1.6, roughly, and it's negative 18. So I'll put this in the calculator. I'm sorry, in my chart, negative 1.6 and negative 18. So one more time. This is negative 1.6 comma negative 18. And this is a 0.42 comma negative 0.08. Any questions? OK, this was an even degree. Can anyone pick an odd degree now? Same steps. Can anyone pick an odd degree? Fifty-four is not odd degree. 59. Which one? Fifty-nine. Two, three, four. It's an even degree. Four. Fifty-three. Fifty-three. Yes, that's a good one. Fifty-three. And that is f of x. Three x squared minus x cubed. Very good. I need domain, and I need to get the chart going. I need degree. I need the maximum number of terms. Maximum. Possible. Degree, please. Three, and ma maximum possible, two, indeed. Domain, please. Good. 
x-intercepts, how do I get them? For y equals 0, I have 3x squared minus x cubed equals 0. Always, in my opinion, always rearrange, and because it's not in descending order, multiply both sides by negative 1. Now let's factor out the greatest common factor. I multiply both sides by negative 1 because it was not in descending order. So multiply both sides and then we get x cubed minus 3x squared. What do I factor out? Good. How many solutions will this equation have, must have? Yes, because the degree was 3. So you're going to give me 2sx equals and 1sx equals what is the multiplicity of 0? So when I put it in the chart, I will say turn. What is the multiplicity of 3? So when I put it in the chart, I will say simple cross. Since this is degree 3, it behaves like the linear function. Either this with a positive leading coefficient or this with a negative leading coefficient. You, don't have, you cannot look at this, you have to look at that. What is the leading coefficient? Negative 1. Negative 1. Remember, you have to rearrange it. So this is negative x cubed plus 3x squared. So since it's a negative leading coefficient, does it look like this, number 1, or like this, number 2? Number 2. Perfect. So what do I write? What do I write under negative infinity? Perfect. What do I write under infinity? Negative infinity. Okay, going through the list, let's see what we have and what we don't. We have domain, we have x and y intercepts. We have the maximum possible number of terms. We have multiplicity with f and n behavior. It's done, just symmetry. So f of negative x which is 3 times negative x squared minus negative x to the third. This is the problem you forgot on the test. Only one or maybe two students did it. So this is 3x squared but plus x to the third. Three questions. Does this equal the original function? Does this equal the opposite? of the original function or none of the above. So none. none of the above, of course. How do I know? It turns at 0 and it crosses at 3. It's almost impossible, right? But it's not the same with the original function. And if you multiply both sides here by negative 1, one of them will be negative, which is this. So nothing. The function is not symmetric. Okay, I'm ready with a, with a chart in front of me, and I don't need anything else. I will graph this function. I have to plot the points 0, 0, and 1, 2, 3. So now can anyone dictate what should I do? Where do I start? I start above. What do I do when I approach the origin? Okay, I'm turning. What do I have to do next? But in order to get to this, I cannot just cross. I have to go to a maximum and then come down and cross. And this is the function f of x equals 3x squared minus x cubed. And I should have written on this one before f of x equals x squared x minus 1, I think it was. Yes, minus 1 cubed and x plus 2. I have to write the name next to it, the graph. Good. Ready? Because we have to find the maximum. So go back to y equals. Clear everything else you had in there. And we put in 3x squared minus x to the third. Okay? Ready? Now, sorry, I forgot. Um, what kind of viewing window do I need? 
because I don't need the whole thing. So uh, let's say between negative four, let's say, and I don't know, five, and negative three and positive four. So you have to chop it up like that, not really. But I just want to see that maximum, see if it's where it's at. So I'm going to say between negative four and four, that's fine. Then I don't have to go that low. So I'm going to say negative three to positive four with a scale of one and just give me the graph. Here it comes. It has to turn at zero, has to come to a maximum, and it has to come down and cross. You can't see it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to change the viewing a little bit with a higher Y, just a little tiny higher Y. And let's say six. Here it comes turns at zero, goes to a maximum, turns and comes down to and crosses at three, as expected. So there is only one local minimum at zero, no discussion there, but I cannot determine this local max by hand. So it's somewhere between zero and three. So second calc, maximum I choose four, and that's zero, yes, and three, yes, give me the maximum. And it's giving us roughly 2, comma 4. And I put in the chart, 2, comma 4. I hope you agree that these polynomial functions are not that hard. Once you see a couple of odd degree and a couple of even degree, they should be, but they, yes, Charles? Uh, for test purposes, I didn't expect this to graph. Oh, just uh, graph your your understanding of this, and oh. just put it in parentheses to comma four. Okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. Now this chapter um, continues with another function, which is so section three dot six. The rest is not part of the course. So I'm just going to move on to 3.6, rational functions. These are way more complicated than polynomial functions. Way more complicated. Everything we discussed in rational functions applies here. But there are two things that we that have no place in polynomials, but they are very important here. Do you remember that we said polynomial functions are continuous functions everywhere? There is, they are defined everywhere, and there is no problem, right? No. Yes, please. Yes, asymptotes actually. Yeah. But rational functions, and we are going to look only at three types. Anything else that those, uh, besides those three types cannot be done with algebra. We cannot even discuss them. So if you see something like this in your book, it's way beyond the scope of the course. It shouldn't even be there. So we're going to look at three different types of rational functions. I'm going to call the first one type 1, of course the second one type 2, and the third one type 3. They're not named at all in your book but I need to show you the difference between these three types so you can easily identify them. Type 1. I'm giving an example and then you'll tell me what the difference between those among those three is. This is an example of type 1. Here's an example of type 2. And here is an example of type 3. I don't expect you to remember these from other courses. This is one of the most sophisticated topics in this class, in my opinion. Okay. I claim that these three are totally different. 
Can anyone say something about it? Why do you think I say that? And it's okay if you're wrong. Yes, Emma? We haven't talked about asymptotes, so you cannot mention that. I mean, you can, but it's not the case. Yes, Charles? So, in type 2, there's a power in the denominator. Yes. And then in type 3, there's a power in the numerator. In other words, you're saying it's second degree. Second degree. Okay, good. So, here is the main difference between those three. Same, it's supposed to be an S. Same degree over same degree. This is a major type of rational functions, major category. Same degree over same degree. It can be this. As long as it's the same degree top and bottom. That is one category. Now, can you tell me in the second category? Higher degree in the denominator. Very good. So I'll say degree n and degree greater than n. Not equal. So in short, higher degree in the denominator. Exactly. Now, can anyone, based on the, what we discussed in the first two, what is the third one telling us? But exactly by one. We cannot go beyond that. So this time is the top has a higher degree than the bottom by exactly one. So if this is degree one, this must be two. If this is five, this must be six. If this is 10, this must be 11 to fit in category three. So I'm going to say degree n plus one and degree n in the denominator. These are the three major groups of rational functions. I'm going to start with the first one. These two are very, very similar. This one I will, according to what my department decided, I will have to exclude it for good because they said exclude slant asymptotes. And these are functions that, ex that have slant asymptotes. So I'm not going to discuss this. I'm only going to discuss the first two. So if you want, after class sometime, I can show you the third type if you want, but it's not going to be part of the course because they said exclude that. So I'm going to exclude it. OK, so these two are the easiest possible. This is more complicated. So these are the two easiest, and actually the type 2 is even easier than type 1. So let's talk, start with f of x, 2x minus 1. Uh, let me change it to 2x minus 2 just because it's, it's going to be look, it's going to look easier. OK. This is type 1 because it has same degree over same degree. Rational functions are not friendly functions. By my notion of friendly, I mean not defined everywhere. I like functions not defined everywhere because I don't have to worry about possibilities of getting undefined. But in this case, this function is not defined everywhere. Can anyone tell us where is this function not defined? At negative 4. So the first step, and I am going to list Let's list. I want to list them now so I don't forget. I want to list what is required for graphing rational functions. And I'll come back to this. So number one, domain. Number two, x and y intercepts. Number three, vertical asymptotes. And behavior near VAs, in short, vertical asymptotes and behavior near those vertical asymptotes. Four, horizontal asymptote. Five, max min, if any, of course, TI-84. 
six symmetry okay you can think of anything else good so we are going to touch up on all these and I'll explain three and four no worries right now five and six are clear so I'll explain those when we get to talk about them in a minute so uh, can anyone give us the domain of this function one more time so I can write it in infinity negative four zero has to be in the chart and infinity and look what I write under negative four why I don't have a number to put in there this signifies there is no number okay good um, yes because when I plug in negative 4 here I have a number divided by 0 which is undefined okay so I want to add something here horizontal asymptote and and behavior they go together notice that I did not separate vertical asymptote and behavior together horizontal asymptote and and behavior together okay good so for now I only have the domain now I'm working on X and Y intercepts so how do I get the X intercept Y equals zero when is a fraction when is a fraction zero yes cross multiply if you want but when is a fraction zero okay let's cross multiply this equals this what should I write equals yes so when is a fraction zero only when the numerator is zero correct so then x equals one I go back to the chart right away and put it in there in the correct spot from left to right and now the y-intercept how do I get the y-intercept yes so f of zero the numerator is the denominator is and the answer is so I write it under zero negative one-half so what do I have so far I have the domain and I have the X and Y intercepts now I need to talk about item 3 note a rational function RF a rational function has a VA a vertical asymptote when or I should say baby where it is undefined I have to be honest and write something in parentheses assuming that factor does not simplify I'll come back and I'll show an example in which it does simplify and I'll explain what happens there 